Hey everyone, my name is Rahat. I hope you all are doing well. I am the host of the video series Mainframe Voices. As the name suggests, we are creating a video series where we gather different perspectives of experts on mainframe technology and mainframe modernization. Our goal is to highlight the importance and future of mainframe in today's technology landscape. In this episode of Mainframe Voices, we dive into the transformative potential of artificial intelligence and machine learning within mainframe environments. As these technologies continue to advance, their integration with mainframe promises to unlock new capabilities and efficiencies. Our experts will share their insights on how AI and machine learning are set to evolve in mainframe settings offering a glimpse into the future of intelligent automation and enhanced data analytics. Join us as we explore how these innovations are poised to reshape the landscape of mainframe technology. It's a good question. It's a, <clears throat> it's a tricky one because uh, I personally think uh, AI is still going through the hype being new. Um, there's probably two trends that will evolve, but will still be a thing over the next couple of years. There's a trend of, uh, I can use mainframes to run AI workloads, okay? And because mainframes historically have um, hosted loads of business data, many, many years of uh, business transactions, activity, et cetera, records, um, <clears throat> running AI workloads on mainframe close to that data actually a useful thing because you can take advantage of processing power of mainframes being close to the data not having to move data out of the mainframes means you have less risks with compliance with data protection uh, with data security mainframes themselves as i mentioned before have been involved to to include uh, uh, neural language processors um yeah so i think the ai running on mainframes there's going to definitely be use cases for that I think there's a separate trend, which is I have a bunch of legacy apps written in legacy languages like COBOL, PLI, Rex, and, and others, even assembly or C. Um, and then uh, there's a trend of using um, uh, LLM models and uh, there's tools that have been created to help convert from these older programming language to more modern programming languages. And that's also going to be a trend. I think the tools are not there, they can, definitely for certain use cases quickly give you a, a convert and a more modern application language for, for those uh, applications. But I think there's also a bit of a risk that they are seen as silver bullets. And in fact, <clears throat> modernizing a whole set of applications on a mainframe using LLMs, uh, technology is not there. And I don't think it's going to get there anytime soon because there's a bit of a context that the LLMs are still not able to grasp. You have applications that have dependencies between themselves, there's dependency on the data, and there's a, something harder to capture, which is mainframes are seen as reliable and uh, stable and all of that, because the applications that have been developed for mainframes run on top of runtimes that are closely optimized to the hardware, which means that the application's logic is very much focused on business. If you're using things like COBOL, for example, or PLI, uh, there's not so much of technical error handling. On the other hand, when you're designing microservices in cloud native architectures, you do need to build in that that logic into your into your functions. And one of the fundamental de principles designed for the cloud is designed for failure. Because if you're designing for failure, it means that the cloud is uh, things will fluctuate, resources will move across um, locations, across availability zones, across regions. And you do need to consider all of these changes that may be out of your control. And it's fine. It's it, Cloud gives you economies of scale and gives you a lot of uh, built-in tools for you to, uh, to make it easier to think about all these failure scenarios. But you do need to think about it as a developer. While you're, you're programming on mainframe, you need to really think more about the business logic, not so much about the technicalities. Um, and if you're trying to convert old languages to more modern languages, you now get, I don't know, something in Java, but it doesn't really have the concept of where you're going to run it. And if you're going to run it outside of the mainframe, you now need to think about all your hair handling and the non-functionals. And probably your application needs to change quite a lot. So what the what the language model gives you, a translated 
application may not necessarily be that useful because you probably need to start from scratch and have a totally different architecture that is designed for the cloud and you should start from scratch. Um, but I guess to coming at your question, AI for mainframes, I think there's the running uh, AI workloads on mainframe close to the data in a performant secure manner. I think that's one trend. And then using AI to evolve legacy applications, that's going to be two, two common trends. That, I think it's extremely promising. Um, it has the capability of being quite disruptive. Um, and I think there are many different aspects of AI and machine learning that can be incorporated into our development and management of the mainframe environment. But uh, I would caution that it's also wildly overhyped at the moment. So you look at things like Watson X that IBM is delivering and you get generative AI capabilities being introduced into the mainframe and other aspects of the IBM computing environment. And yeah, that's great. Um, and um, if we kind of pivot to my area of expertise, which is DB2, uh, and you look at DB2 for ZOS, and uh, the version 12 brings AI functions with the SQL Data Insights capability. So you're able to write queries that you were never able to write before with these AI uh, models that are built into the system now. Uh, it takes a bit of training to get these things working, but once they're working, the ability to say, I have a customer here, show me uh, other customers that are like that customer. Write a query to do that without AI, you, you can't do it. So great, uh, that's usage of DB2, but then management of DB2, uh, is being uh, powered by more AI capabilities, uh, machine learning for ZOS and DB2 AI for ZOS, uh, which brings AI machine learning powered optimizer into DB2. So the optimizer now can learn your workload and write optimized statements based on your workload rather than the generalized uh, optimizer that does it based on you know everything else. So great stuff, wonderful stuff. Um, overhyped though. What do I mean by that? Uh, there are people who think it can do things that it just can't. At least not yet, and maybe not for a long time. You know. So for example, I, I really wouldn't trust AI to code a program from scratch without having a developer look at it, review it modify the code uh, and you know can you get a generative AI platform to do maintenance uh, you, that means you're going to have to feed it a model of the entire existing system and people aren't doing that and then you add to it the ability the not the ability but the the problem that uh, these models tend to hallucinate uh, so they come up with things that just don't exist in the real world. I was uh, interacting with ChatGPT and doing some research on Zips. Uh, it dreamed up some parameters for Zips that just don't exist. So, you know, if somebody was trying to learn specialty processors using ChatGPT and they didn't understand what was already out there already, they'd look at that parameter and say, oh, great, now let's try and use that parameter and you know, they're just not going to be able to find it. So it's, it's promising, like I said, can be disruptive, but also at the current point in time, wildly overhyped. So use caution. 40 years of experience, every new thing is going to take away your job. You know, I go back you know, 20, 25 years ago, and people were talking about automation. We're going to automate DBAs out of existence. We haven't done it. Uh, we're going to automate programmers out of existence with AI. You know, getting back to what I just said about hallucination. All right, if you want your developers to hallucinate, Go for it, but you're going to wind up with applications that aren't doing what you want them to do. So to me, the the key is not worrying about how will it replace me on the job, but how can I use it to better perform my job? So it will make developers more effective, more efficient, more capable of doing uh, larger amounts of workload in a smaller amount of time. And these are all you know great things and things that are going to be needed especially on the mainframe platform, as you know, people my age start retiring out and people your age start taking over for what we've done. People, uh, I was talking to somebody um, the other day saying, now that, I, now that AI is here, I, th I think for the general public, 
it took something like chat GPT, you know, an AI chatbot to come up for people to say, oh, AI is here. IBM has been doing artificial intelligence for 20 years. You know, the, there's, <laughs> they had, uh, they had big blue, they had a mainframe playing chess against uh, the, one of the chess masters, Kasparov maybe, um, back in the day. So IBM has been working with artificial intelligence for decades. Uh, Watson's been around for a long time. Um, so I think IBM's continuing to lead the way in artificial intelligence. Um, they've got, what was I talking about? At IBM Tech Exchange last year, there was a lot of talk about the ability to convert COBOL code into Java code now, um, which is going to help. I still think that's a tool programmers can use. I don't think it's going to be able to, or not in, in my foreseeable future anyway, I don't think it'll be able to just go through en masse and convert COBOL code to Java code that'll work. It's going to be a tool that's going to do 50, 60, 70% of the job. And then programmers are going to need to look at it and say, okay, how can I optimize this? How can I make sure it works? Let's debug it. Let's make sure that it that it works. The same as asking chat GPT to write something for you. You, you get part of the way there and, and you do the rest yourself. Same as when Google first came out and search engines first came out, you know, a decade ago, people would say, oh, now I know the answer to everything. Well, you don't <laughs> because you type something in and you get so much junk and garbage, you've got to try and look through to find the, the right answer. It's, it's a tool that's going to help people do a better job. It's going to save us time, but it's, uh, it's definitely, again, in my foreseeable future, it's definitely not taking over. Who knows, who knows what it'll be in 50 or 100 years' time. We, uh, we may be ruled by robots, but, uh, but for now, yeah, it's a tool. Uh, AI, AI has so many applications. Again, just making things smarter and better. Um, I was talking to somebody a couple of days ago about um, the sheer amount of data, business data. I mentioned that a few minutes ago with uh, 80, 88% or whatever it is of, uh, of business data still sitting on mainframes. All of this data, this massive, massive amount of data sitting on mainframes doesn't usually get looked at. Most organizations will look at the current data or, you know, back over the last 12 months or the last six months or the last quarter. Uh, but with such massive amounts of data, I think companies are going to start to use AI to just start going back through all of it. And instead of it just sitting there and nobody knowing, AI is going to be going through this massive data and looking for patterns and looking for trends and looking for things that are cyclical and so forth, um, really starting to look to get that next competitive advantage over their competitors or, or ways of doing things more efficiently based on just long-term trends. Uh, I think that's going to be a powerful use for AI. I suppose the sky's the limit, really. It's, it's going to be, you know, like when they came up with computer languages, programming languages, I don't think the world quite guessed all of the things that that programming languages could be used to do, uh, and the same with AI. I think more and more and more stuff's going to be invented, and we're going to be surprised every year um, with all of the cool things that we can do with AI. Um, but we we certainly need, need to keep an idea, uh, an eye on the ethics of AI. I know IBM's leading the way on that too. Um, we need to make sure that AI is used for for good, not for evil. I suppose is the simple part, um, and that will be a very interesting conversation as well. Important thing to state is that mainframes are mainly systems of record. That's where they are shining. That's where it's their power are. And this is the niche that they occupy. Within this realm, it's very important to make sure that the transactions are accurate and that they are valid and that there is no banking industry fraud going on. And this is the area where artificial intelligence that's happening in sub-millisecond space is insanely effective. So I'm rather certain that artificial intelligence, machine learning is part of the platform. It's going to be high, more part of the platform than ever. Right now, I still don't think that most of the banks and everybody is doing processing every transaction for fraud. Uh, usually it's done by sampling like 10 to 20%. And then based on this uh, estimating what's happening within the system. So this is going to move to every transaction, obviously. And But for example, if we are talking about the large language models, I, I'm not sure, but I don't really see them running on mainframe as of now. I think that they will be part of the mainframe in that they will support and reflect also the mainframe environments, that they will be able to help the people that are working with the mainframes. Obviously, that they will also cover mainframe languages like COBOL, JCL, REX, uh, unless JCL and REX get replaced by Python. Kind of questionable, you will see. We are still too soon in this change. 
I can see it in some areas. Some large language models are good at answering questions around how the different pieces of mainframe works based on the IBM documentation. And they are b- better at looking things up in IBM documentation because it's kind of scattered across the place. It's not really easy to find anything there. But other than that, um, I think it's too soon. I, even if you look outside of the mainframe environments and in the distributed, the use cases are still mostly being developed. Like, yes, we have the obvious ones, like the AIs that are helping us uh, write texts, write books, write uh, requirement documents. But this is kind of an obvious one. It's not that difficult. The ones that are drawing images, yeah, it, it's great. But like business-wise for the systems of record, it's kind of far. I can see them in the realm of cybersecurity and that's where they are being involved. But again, it's not so much language, large language model as the previous generation of like AI or machine learning tools. So I think we will still need to see in the next three years, not just in the main framework, but generally in enterprise world, things takes time. You need to reflect this for tens of thousands of people you need to make it securely. You need to make sure that your private data will stay private. And this is still work in progress for plenty of, for most of the incumbents in the area. I don't think necessarily that they need to be better. I think that even if they stay as they are, problem is that the processes are already in place and you need to change them. And changing processes on a scale that touches tens, hundreds, millions of people is totally different thing than building a startup with 15 people. And so I think that what is here is already enormous and it's gonna improve our life a lot. It's just gonna take time and it's not gonna happen as fast as lots of people think. That's all. Even if they don't evolve. If they evolve, it's even better. But again, it will take time to adapt and be able to leverage it. I see. As a as a or uh, for for as a um, engineer here in Dynatrace. So how we use artificial intelligence and machine learning through monitoring is that we are gathering a lot of data. And with the, with the data that we gather from mainframe, we are able to um, predict, um, let's say, possible possible issues that um, the customer can can experience. But if we could be alert them into, let's say, um, user degradation or some failure rates and error rates that could happen in the future. But it's just based on that data, and we're using AI and machine learning to learn how. The users are using the company's data and maybe predict on how it will, you know, what will happen if there's a Black Friday or happen during the holidays. And now with that data, the the company can actually prepare themselves that, hey, it's a possibility that we can have this alert around this time. So maybe we should prepare for it. So this those business analysis, at least in my perspective, as a, a monitoring tool for Dynatrace, that's how AI or machine learning should be used. So AI, artificial intelligence. So some people get freaked out about AI. They've seen lots of movies where, like, you know, robots go bad and things, and you know, they, you know, and then sort of Will Smith has to chase them down, or, or, um, you know, Tom Cruise has to kind of like, you know, outthink the the kind of sentient uh, thing that's gone a bit rogue. Um, and for me, AI. I mean, a lot of what people are interested in the AI is, is large language models, right? So if you, if if you want to predict the next token, the next word, the next number in a sequence, um, based upon feeding vast amounts of previous data, um, large language models and generative AI is very, very good at predicting what the next token is going to be. Um, and also the reliability that that is the next token. So it can give you a confidence score. And that's very, very good for things like languages, like predicting the next word in a sentence. So AI is phenomenal around authoring sentences now um a lot of people now trying to write code you know develop it's really nice now to have like an assistive agent looking over your shoulder to let you sort of predict the next word you're going to write and also predict help help write software more reliably and understand software more reliably so i think that's a huge trend that's going to come along in the mainframe space because you're right you've got these things that have been written in the 1960s 1970s 1980s that do need a bit of a, a fresh coat of paint. And I think AI will be very good at analyzing that and suggesting new patterns to refactor that to make things more modern. Fraud detection is very, very important. Uh, there's a huge amount of money that just gets leached out of the um, sort of financial system through bad actors, um, you know, theft, fraud, you know, people being coerced into giving money, um, 
all of those things like that. And AI is is very, very, should, will take a much more leading role, uh, basically saying, well, this financial transaction is is a suspicious one. You know, maybe it needs more oversight. Um, so I think AI will be, will, provides an incredible role in that. And also in tuning and optimizing as well. I think right now, operating um, large complex computer systems is a very manual task, which is very, very difficult. And when things break, it's very, very expensive, right? People on social media within a few seconds will be saying, oh, I can't get, you know, that, uh, you know, I can't get my money out of this or this payment's gone down or something's timed out. Um, and the world, the developing world is so reliant on IT infrastructure. It's very, very vulnerable. Um, and especially with things like, you know, climate change and geopolitically, I think AI will be very, very good at predicting outages um, and solving solving things before they've uh, before they've occurred um, and dealing with dealing with different threats. So I think AI is not a, it's not going to go rogue and threaten humanity. I think it's genuinely something that's really going to help help us. Yeah, everything as well from solving diseases, you know, predicting new protein models, new antibiotics. I could go on and on about AI because I love the topic, but I think it's a wonderful thing that's uh, really going to help. It's really coming at the right time for, for the human race, I think. Within, and, and my, my experience is more on, obviously on the software rather than on the hardware, because there's a lot of innovation happening on the hardware and the chips itself. Um, but, you know, the mainframe has a huge amount of data on it, whether that's the data in the um, system of record in the DB2 or your or your database, or that's whether that's in-flight transactions that are happening with kicks or MQ. Um, and so a lot of the work that's happening at the moment is around how you can take the data that's coming through the system, whether that's SMF records or VSAM data sets, or um, however those transactions are happening, it's it's capturing the information as it's as it's going. So for example, fraud detection is a huge um is a huge area at the moment that's looking at, okay, so this transaction is a bit weird. Why is that happening? Oh, we've seen that, you know, 20,000 times over the last week. That seems a bit odd. Why? How can we collect more information about that type of transaction happening? Um, I think that is really where AI is going to be important. Um, well, that's one area anyway, the kind of real practical use cases from a customer, you know, an end user like me or you using your banking app um, or booking a flight. I think the other scenario is where, the in-house teams can get more clarity on their software. So what's encoder system for Z came out, I think, last year. And, and that's looking at how we optimize the code on the mainframe. Um, so looking less at how the end user, me or you, are seeing the um, transactions, but more on the, the kind of development side. How can we make it easier to look at the code, understand the code on the mainframe? Um, how can we maintain it in a better way? And I think actually augmenting the AI and the human together is the best way to do that. It's not necessarily the technology that's going to drive all of the innovation because AI can't extract all the information that we have 50 years of knowledge in. Um, but I think that will be huge in terms of how we can work together to make that make the code bases easier and make it a better experience for the end user. Um, certainly, AI can be used to address um, business issues such as if you're in banking or retail and you want to prevent credit card fraud or financial fraud within seconds of a uh, bank of a banker's card being used illegally uh, that's a perfect example but certainly what BMC software are doing is using um, generative AI to address the challenges of legacy code and complex data structures in um, old legacy mainframe environments in businesses. We can use AI to, well, certainly to analyze COBOL code and to uh, find um, errors or upgrade it or optimize it based on um, the, the, the current architecture of the mainframe. So it's basically using AI to analyze code, to bring it up to date, uh, to find errors, to test it more thoroughly, basically automating DevOps in a, a, a more innovative way and using, using AI and machine learning. Uh, it could al also be used to analyze the huge amounts of data that DB2 processes um, DB213 has got um, SQL Data Insights, which is uh, a, a brilliant addition to the DB2 family. 
it uses the uh, the onboard AI analytics in the Telem processor, and you can analyze SQL by building um, building your model to analyze your data, build vector tables, and then you can query this with just using standard SQL with analytical functions that have been added to DB213. Um, and that unlocks the vast amount of knowledge that uh, the data that DB2 processes, which leads to better decision making, uh, improved business outcomes, stuff like that. One of the things I see when I when I joined the mainframe space was that there are a lot of tasks and things around um, like IT ops and, and different operational things um, that were repetitive and I could see computers doing a lot better. So I'm not an artist and I'm not really in the art art space. <laughs> so I haven't, I, I don't have a lot of you know insight into that part of things, but when it comes to operations and the, the technical technological potential of mainframes, um, one of the things that they're really good at is noticing patterns and making um, um, determinations based on those patterns. So like if these certain things happen, in millions of transactions, like what does that mean? Um, and so this is really important for things like fraud detection. So things that we historically have not been able to catch before because they're just anomalies that happen just here and there. Um, the machine learning and, and the, the effort that's being put into not only training these models, but also like processing these, like even, even ones that are really, really complicated, really, really niche, we're going to be able to find them through these really fast um, inferencing machines that we have in Mayframe. <laughs> um, and so I, I really see a lot of potential um, in that. And then just day-to-day -day operations where we discover things that um, we may not have seen in the past and didn't have the computing power to see before. Is going to be more critical in the sense of, AI supporting developers and helping the developers of the mainframe to be more productive. Uh, first thing is the Z was the first one to build it into the Telem processor to allow inline transaction processing with machine learning. So bringing AI into the chip before all this hype, what's going on with AI? I, I also think that as we evolve more and more optimized AI will run in the right place. Generative AI is fun, um, chat GPT, whatever you want to talk about, fun. And it does help with communication, but it's not the only kind of AI. And over time, Z boxes will continue to evolve with their support. But we need to think about what's the right kind of AI at the right time Machine learning um, is many times the right AI for fraud detection, for, so take your choice of, and, and really and truly, Z is part of the hybrid cloud. I expect over time, we'll continue to evolve the relationship of Z and cloud and quantum so that they're all working together as a hybrid cloud to do the right work in the right place. And so certain things may be in public cloud, certain things may be in private cloud, some things will be running on Z, and then for those things that we need quantum, we'll run on quantum. And, and it'll all work together to drive a better user experience, to reduce fraud, to improve the way our systems work and we interact with our systems. Our case in the company for our customers, uh, you cannot uh, find so many COBOL and PL1 programmers anymore in the world and the young people are learning more Java and something like that. Therefore, you can use uh, Gen AI uh, and uh, machine learning tools uh, to convert uh, PL1 or COBOL programs to Java that, uh, and from that you can create micro, uh, a microservices architecture that you, you can containerize that all. And yes, I have got all the requests uh, from people uh, who are not so experienced with COS uh, that they want uh, to use Linux for development instead of uh, COS. And then it would be nice if you can transfer all the binaries directly via uh, DevOps uh, pipelines from Linux 
on C to COS on C if that is really required also in the future by the customers? Going to evolve considerably because um, AI truly can, uh, that, that is a portion that is high. We have to agree on that. But it has true potential. The AI, the, especially the generative AI that we know as of today, um, can handle documentation work very well. It can summarize, it can transform, it can analyze document very well. And in mainframe, we have a lot of documents. So first thing is source code. All the COBOL PL1 assembler code that we have written, they are also like that. And companies are trying to modernize them to Java or Python. And main, within mainframe, we can run Java and Python. Many people, they are not aware of these things. But when the modernization work picks up, AI will play a major role in uh, converting these old programs to a modern language so that uh, the newer, the younger generation who are familiar with these languages, they can use these languages, you know, programming languages. Um, it will also play a major role in incident management. A lot of time is spent on uh, errors and how to fix problems within mainframe. And over the last many years, organizations have collected a lot of information about the incidents that happen in the application program. You can use AI and machine learning within mainframe and process your data to understand old problems within mainframe so that incident management will also be using mainframe AI quite a bit. And also regular document management. So AI will evolve within mainframe considerably in the next few years, and and I'm assuming it will be very it will be heavily used uh, by organizations.